Okay. Unless you Excellent. have a move. There are moves that have the thing. Okay. Just remember, um, no, they don't have to necessarily believe you. Of course There's not. No, no move to convince them either. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. I, I'm going to need Olaf and Baldur to start thinking of ways that they can encourage um, Sumander and Heidi to move um, and try to take control. And we need to figure out a way to do it in such a way that the village will go along with it. Um, We're back so. live, by the way. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I lay, think... your, lay your plans. You laid out some pretty sick plans during the break. I had to get up and walk away, but I was impressed by the level of so I I um I I have a feeling we're we're basically being led into a meat grinder here, um kind of for the for the audience I think um like for for our what we are thinking is that uh, this gospel of the white Christ is is probably our lifeline in the situation, um and we're trying to figure out ways in which we can use this situation to our farmstead's advantage. So um, we were just talking about how uh, I was about to roll the 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 rune carved bones to look into Heidi's future um, and see what information we can glean from that. Let's do it. Okay. Real talk with Heidi. Fingers Heidi. crossed. Ooh, well, eh, not too bad. All right. Worse. You have some things. Okay. You get to ask me two questions, and the rest is hidden. Okay. Uh. I am going to ask what circumstance are they in and what do I see happening to them with the faces blurred? <laughs> uh, you see two glasses and the feast hall. And so this are... is specifically looking into um, Heidi's future. just Right. You yeah. actually can't target a specific person with it. Oh, you I can't. Just look at the future. Okay. Yep. So uh, if you, for instance, had succeeded, you could have filled in the futures to yeah, involve yeah, yeah. Heidi. But your magic isn't strong enough today. Your, your okay. connection with the fates. I don't suppose like, someone can... Yo, what's up? Mm -mm, no. This right. is what you get. You get what you paid for. That's right. I did pay for this. Um, two glasses in the feast hall. Yeah, you see two glasses at the feast hall. And both of them contain death. Both of them contain death. I don't know what that actually looks like. Is it just like... Uh... So, there's probably... You've seen spirits of death before, right? Yep. What does a spirit of death look like? Uh, I don't know. Little skull and uh, smoky okay. visage kind of... Skulls of Coming smoky, up out of the glasses. Smoky okay. skulls rise from both glasses. Okay. Do I notice anything in particular about the glasses other than the fact that they're just glasses? They are... Uh, you see the circumstances. So yeah, they are large golden goblets. Mm. Okay. They have the markings of the House of Ingold. Huh. Very yes. interesting. Is death bubbly and frothy grenadine flavored? <laughs> mm. Yeah. I prefer uh, my death mojito style, ladies. You want to kill me with some poisons? Just send it my way right there in a mojito. Okay. All right. So, I have read the future, and I have determined doom. <laughs> she, she, she says. Uh, no, she, uh, she, she relays. What does she say to him? Hmm. After having that vision, I will tell Baldor um, that I see death in the Great Hall to two individuals. Um, hmm. Interesting. I leave out certain details, specifically the fact they're golden goblets. Are you leaving out yeah. that it's obviously of the house that we're visiting? Uh, well, I mean, I said the Great Hall here, so... The, well, right. I mean, it, it, the hey, fact whoa, that whoa, 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 whoa! This is a vision giver. She doesn't tell you exactly what happens. She tells you her interpretation of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, yeah, I just Death's want to make sure we understand the context of what we're told. The fates. 
And as we've no, already it. discovered, um, what I see is not always exactly what happens because sure, there's sure. a physical <laughs> component to this as well. Right, this um, could be like a like a bro cup where you reach through the arms and you drink the other guy's cup or something. Yeah, or it could all be a metaphor. We don't. Know. It could all be a metaphor. Mm-hmm. You've had uh, metaphorical. But it does before. give me a yeah. a clue. Goddamn cash money rain. Fucking it taxes. does. <laughs> 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 it does give me a clue that I had not considered, um, which, and and it, it may serve no other purpose of than to you know warn that like to jog my memory that this could actually be the case and it's happening, is that um, if you were looking to murder me, probably the easiest way to do it would to have my patrons drop dead immediately after reading the bones for me. <laughs> Um, and Laura and Aitlin, Aitlin, we already know is an ambitious guy and the removal of Ingold and Ingolf, uh, would be a very, uh, fortuitous turn of events for him and for Gearney, um, as well. I mean, I, this is just one possible interpretation of, of kind of the vision that I have received, but it kind of makes me wonder if there's some plotting going on and if Aitlin is looking to move up a little bit faster than he otherwise would. So, um, yeah, okay. I mean, that's just me musing aloud, um, both for the benefit of, I guess, the audience and for my players here as well. You're in your Matrix mind space. You're drawing yep. arrows. All of them lead toward your death. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> towards two deaths. <laughs> yep. Towards death. Yeah. Yep, okay. So, so it's... So, it so I so, actually had two people send me messages real quick here. Uh... Olaf Olafsson, you appear to have gotten four check marks, right? Yes. So you have actually earned an advance. You get to pick a new move based yeah. on your playbook, if you'd like to start thinking about that. Yeah, I wasn't sure when how you wanted to deal with yeah, that. Whenever yeah. you're ready. You all erase right. all of your checks, and you've got the uh, the new move. Yeah, I also was uh, checking, and what I thought was an advance is apparently... Not in advance. I thought you could choose a new role. No, I believe you can only choose a new role when you survive a winter. Ah, okay. I think it's I think it's a common move. Let's double check here. When you survive a winter in Iceland, you can change your character's role. Okay. And so what that is is you change the role, you lose all the moves you currently have, and you gain the new moves, and you lose all your relationships and gain new relationships. Oh wow! You're but basically, basically like basically but making new... your character from the start. Right, but okay. you can, when you advance as a husk Carl, pick a new move from another male role. Yes. So you yeah. can pick a move from uh, Goaty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which might be beneficial. Just saying. So even though you won't be Goaty, you will perhaps be on the road. Or, or, just throwing this out here, you could also pick a move from the man playbook. Yeah, you can so if you survive the winter, you'll actually be able to yeah. switch to Goatee, I think, right? Yes, he could. Yeah, I could, but I'm only going to do that if that makes sense role-playing-wise. Mm-hmm. I've actually sort of gotten the support of the people. So we'll see. That might be hard. I'm a bit of an asshole. But if I can... If I can bring prosperity, they might be willing to put up with me. Right. Hmm. Mail move. I mean, yeah, that's something actually we could actually use. Not right so now, at this very point in time, but... Don't you, you get know. the mail moves for free? If he... No, no. Oh, There's the man moves. There's a playbook moves. called The Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Sorry, sorry. We can do stuff like, you know, have cattle and... Thus, not starve as much. Have a long house and keep your people happy and warm. Mm. Yeah, that's things your village currently doesn't have, like warmth, (laughs) entertainment, (laughs) happiness, food. Who needs happiness as long as you've got money and uh, wine and a good woman at your side? That's happiness. (laughs) Literally. This guy is literally like a 1980s gangster. He's like, <laughs> as long as you've got a fat stack of cash and bitches at your side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Hey. 
I make no. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I I make no apologies for the character I created. Uh, he is a he is a vicious bastard. It's the driving force behind this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like oh, that's the other message. Someone was like, "Why don't you run the rest of Jade Regent?" Using Saga of the Icelanders. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could get everybody but Craig to switch over to it. And it would yeah. be so weird. Yeah. It would, be, it, would have, be, have a, it would be difficult to have a conversation with him involving his deity. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers for anybody that wants Could to you start. Could him as a Gothi of Romagog? <laughs> 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 Jesus. I was just about to ask if his deity was Rovanaga. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah when in doubt, Rovanaga, uh, get out. He's attempted to be a secret worshiper, but there are people that <laughs> pop up and they're like, hey, you're the chosen one of Rovanaga, aren't you? Now he's got, like, armor with the Rovanaga holy symbol on it. He's got a goddamn lightning sword. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a literal lightning sword from his god. And everybody's like... What what's going on with this lightning sword? And he's like, "Don't worry about it. It's just a god thing. I'm totally not evil." Don't worry. Whenever it critically hits someone, it just screams for their blood. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Normal, oh yeah. Hey, everybody's weapon. got swords like that. They're they're popular back east. Ah uh, yeah. All right. So back on so a more we, serious note. I okay. feel like we can end that. The first day your arrival now. So I, I would Death actually like to have a more direct conversation with Heidi about Sumander. Whoa, holy fuck. Did you guys hear that? Nope. Man, that was a thunder boom. Well, if I lose power, uh, fuck the storm. You hear me, <laughs> Thor? You hear me? Uh, <laughs> Should I roll uh, temp fate? Because that's a moving game. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. Very hey. clever, Arthur. I know. Very I clever. So. I feel like you almost can... certainly not only am I going to lose power, but it's going to fry my SSD. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do have a surge protector, right? Yeah. yeah. You should be safe. I won't be coming back to the States until oh, next okay. year. Uh, so, yuck, yuck, yuck. at which point I will not be bringing my hammer. TSA had issues last time. Could you just fly over here on your hammer? No, no. Thor could never fly on his hammer. He has a chariot pulled by two rams oh, that, that, that flies. We've got new Thor and we've got Thor original. Yeah, Thor Mjolnir, classic. Mjolnir doesn't actually... Uh, is, is I not thought a the Marvel thing. comic book's interpretation wasn't that he flew, but that he hurled the hammer at such incredible speed that he just like yeah. throws himself. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Marvel As if that's comics. A thing. I thought that's what he did. He's like he always winds it up before he flies. So I was yeah, under the that... impression that it actually turned into some kind of propeller, which violates all laws of aerodynamics. <laughs> Basically, that that's the thing. the The original thing is that he's got a chariot pulled by two rams that, whenever he flies with, creates thunderstorms. He carries Milnit, which is just you know a powerful warhammer. But what really makes him strong is the fact that he is literally wearing a belt of giant strength, which gives him the strength of a giant. Seems he, the, the original belt of giant strength. That's why he can crush those big, well, frost giants and shit with, with his hammer. It's not because of Mjolnir or, his, or himself. I thought it was because of the purity in his heart. Yeah, no. The original Thor was more was uh, literally was all about uh, his hobbies included, yes, uh, flying making under the lady Sif, making out with the ladies, uh, punching Loki for being an ass, uh, getting drunk, and then and then and this is an actual ex excerpt, uh, getting drunk and then wandering around looking for. Trolls and uh, giants to to fight because he was bored. Yeah, that sounds pretty legit. Yeah, no. that's that, that's 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 basically I him. I that on the internet. I'm like, hey, I really want to fight some trolls. I guess I better play some CS:GO. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. So wait, did someone want to do something before I yeah. call it a, a night? Yes. Yeah, so the, the um, Un wanted to take the opportunity to talk to Heidi about Sumander. 
Um, we had been talking kind of about Heidi and what he's been up to. We know he's converted to gospel of the right Christ. He found uh, Sumander and he saved him. Yeah. Um, she's going to use the opportunity to learn um, kind of his perspective on how Sumander feels about being pushed out of potential rulership of the village. Okay, so let me look over my moves list. I'm going to have to step carefully during this conversation. <laughs> oh, man, that seems like a good one. He's like... So he shifts his massive bulk and shrugs his shoulders. He's like, Simondor is a good man. He, uh, the rulership of the village is not something he wants... I think that he is content with simply leading his flock, both the literal flock and the flock of the Gospel of the White Christ. But surely, with Aitlin coming in as the new leader of the village, Christianity will not prosper under his rulership. So, he looks at you kind of strangely and is like, Ingold will be Gothi for some time, I think, unless something were to happen to him. And as it is, it would seem that Christianity will continue to spread under his rulership. And I have not met with Aitlin, but I do not think that Ingold would allow a man such as Aitlin to come between him and his son. I believe that Aitlin is probably accepting of the Gospel of the White Christ, perhaps. It is something you would have to take up with him. Is that um, something we actually learned about Aitlin and I just forgot about it? No, you okay. never learned such a thing. Okay. What 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 we just learned about Aitlin? I was talking to people on. So I think we just learned that um, uh, Heidi says that Aitlin might be open to the gospel of the White Christ. Hmm. Interesting. No, that's... if that's the impression you got, that's not what I was trying to throw down. Okay. I, I... So, Aitlin has been extremely um, devout in his worship of the, the Norse gods. Yep. And he is not open to such things. Okay. The thing is, he's, n he's not like, let's kill all the Christians. Sure. That's not something he does. Okay. How many in the village do we know uh, are a Which part village? of Sumander's flock? Which huh? village? Uh, the this one that we're going with. Yeah, right this here? one. Yeah. The only people you've heard discussed are Simander himself and uh, IT. That's li you, you've literally not had enough time to talk to anyone else yet. No, fair enough. It's like uh, so. I'll ask uh, Heidi directly. His flock, you say? How many does does he lead? Well, you know, his father gave him 30 slaves for his coming of manship, and when he became a priest of the Gospel of the White Christ, he freed all of the slaves, and the slaves in turn bound themselves to the White Christ. <clears throat> and that at is that most point, interesting. Many have begun to follow him in recent days, many who are slaves who wish to be freed. <clears throat> I myself wish to be free of my past. I sought forgiveness for my ways. I was about to commit serious crimes. And then God decided to strike down the wicked men who had led me down that path by making me drop the lantern oil. The most fortunate turn of events, which I'm so certain you can give credit to your God for. But sure. Yes, I just gave credit to my yeah. god right now. Yeah. Uh, that is something that I did. <laughs> um let's see. Okay, so we've learned that Sumander has a number of followers, mostly slaves in the village. No, um no. they used to be slaves. Well, okay, used once to be slaves are, freed once them. Once you follow the gospel of the white Christ, you're a free man. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys want to know about um, Sumander? Can you think of anything? Mm, not for now, but I'm starting to consider uh, if, consider an alliance, alliance with, uh, with, with him instead of the... I love how rapid fire your plans are. <laughs> so, for those mm. people watching at home, 
You can go on Google and type in TV tropes, Xanato speed chat. And that's currently what Thor is doing. He's just like, here's an elaborate plan where I win. No, wait, here's another one. No, all of these I win, no matter what happens. I'm trying. I'm trying, but. Uh... Okay. There's um, so many factors here. Is, uh, is Thor a present tonight? At the uh, at the feast in the great hall, Thora. Thora. Thora, Ale's daughter. Um, yes, I believe she is present. Okay. She's kind of seething in a corner. She's seething in a corner. Yeah, she's giving you significant glances. I'm sure she is. Um, so, I am going to go. I'm going to excuse myself from the table and go talk to her. Okay. Um, I approach, and I say to her, "Walk with me outside." And she says, I would rather stay in the comfort of the uh, Great Hall here. Why would I leave the Lodge to go out with you, Unicrone? Perhaps, if for your daughter's sake. She rolls her eyes and is like, fine, for my daughter's sake, I will go with you. Um, I am going to spend one of my holds with uh, Thora um, to ask the question... How could I get this character to back Girney's marriage to either Sumander or Ingolds and drop whatever plan she has to kill me? So you're you're spending Bond, not Hold. A, uh, yes, I have. At this point, I have four Bonds with her. Yep. I think. Yeah, you're spending a Bond. Yeah. Uh, and you should be able to check mark that relationship again. Okay. Uh, how could you get uh, Thora to support Simander's marriage to Gurney? Is that the question? Um, I I would like so uh, here's my thoughts here, um, and maybe you can help me kind of flesh them out in terms mm -hmm. of the story. Um, Thora hates me, and she hates me for good reason. I stole her daughter, and uh, and and encouraged her to embrace her, I guess, weirding ways or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a dune. Uh, whatever. Yeah, sure. you know, it's called the same thing. All right. <laughs> Weird. It, okay. Anyway, her 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 seed cone ways. I I was responsible for this, um, and but ultimately, in terms of my own backstory, maybe this has changed, and this is up to you, Arthur. Um, she has always wanted um, her daughter to return to a more traditional role to support the family and of course. and abandon her faith. Yeah. And what I am what I am suggesting not or not i mean suggesting faith. this they is both believe in the old gods it's just that she doesn't believe in the magic yeah so i am i am looking for a way to give her what she wants namely that her daughter will be married to a man of the village um and adopt the traditional gender roles that she wishes her daughter to to have um and i would like to figure out how to flip her um, uh, her plans because right now Gearney is not not abandoning him at all. She's actually positioning herself in a in a in a place of greater power. I am I am trying to offer her exactly what she wants. So I think she gives you a significant glance. So uh, this is this is my conversation to you, and this is all predicated yep. on how could I get her character to. Yep. Um, and she so that's kind of my my thought process. And. Her answer is very clearly that she would never allow her daughter to marry a Christian scum. Okay. A slave freer, someone who not only doesn't respect the gods in the old ways, okay. but is literally, like, ruining it for the rest of us. Okay. Um, she would never allow such a union. Okay. Three times no. Three times no. She would <laughs> never do that. Okay. <laughs> As I have four, bo uh, four bonds... Um, I'm going to spend another. Look into her heart. And, um, how could I get her to accept a union with Aitlin? Mm, wow, that's a tough one, man. Um, she gives you a significant glance. <laughs> And We're just that, walking, having significant glances at yeah, each other because we haven't just, actually you just conversed like, yet. Raise your eyebrow towards her, <laughs> and she looks at you. So yeah, it is basically like Dune in the weirding ways. You have like 
long <laughs> non-verbal communication. It's like the Foundation series and the yep. second Foundation, <laughs> where they're like, okay, we're gonna have paragraphs of speech that will all be conveyed in the way I crook my eyebrow. I love the idea that Thor is in the back, or Boulder's in the background, and he's got these pieces that he's moving around <laughs> trying to position people, and then these two ladies are like, and then they just know what's going on. <laughs> and that's it. There's nothing else to it. In order for Thora to approve of a marriage of Aitlin and Gurney, uh, Aitlin would have to be available. I think Laura would probably have to be dead. Laura would have to be dead? Yeah. Or just married off to someone else? They're getting married in two days. Unless no, you they... somehow intend to completely overthrow the wedding. She's going to have to be dead in order for Gurney to be a viable candidate again. Hmm. Or whisked away to some other village. Just okay. saying. <clears throat> I am going to play this card. Um, and I look at her and I say, Who's You don't approve like of you me, do you? My trap card. <laughs> I, uh, she she Laura's says to like of course I don't approve of you, foolish woman. I represent everything you despise. Just your age and your insolence and your magic. Very well. What do you think of your daughter becoming me exactly? I think that. The more that I see her power grow, the more accepting I am of such circumstances. <clears throat> Do you truly believe that she will come back to you when she is as old and insolent as I am? She is here now, and with any luck, if she were to ever become as old and insolent as you were, I would be dead before I see it. Well, that may be so. However, what if there was an alternative? What if you could have your daughter back, back home where she belongs, doing that which she was meant to do? She's looking at you very suspiciously now, and it's just like, what is it specifically that you are offering in the old? I am offering you the opportunity to reclaim the love of your daughter and embrace her as an equal, not as a mystic groveling at her feet. Or not as a not groveling at her feet as she is a mystic. I can offer you a proper union to a man who would embrace the old ways and put a roof over her head and keep her in line with what you would expect. So she just cuts you off there and she's like, A proper union? You have no sons. You can offer no union. There are many fine men in our village. Your words there are, are many poison. fine you men have in this no village. One to offer. You speak words and suggestion, but they are as smoke. Hmm. I'm feeling like this plan is going to backfire if I go forward with it. Um, hmm. This woman hates me too much. Does fear you. That is something you chose for her to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fear doesn't necessarily mean hate, but it's kind of evolved to that. Um, which I totally understand was mostly my fault. Um... I did steal her daughter away. And I'm offering her, her back. She seems not interested in in the union. I can't openly offer Aitlin because then I would be openly committing myself to ruining the union and usurping the current power. That's a risk. That's a gamble I'm not willing to make with this woman who hates me so much and could very easily turn that back into exactly what she wants, which is namely me publicly crucified. Um, well, no, she probably wouldn't crucify you. That's, well, that's whatever. A thing. That's a Christian thing. You're absolutely right. Um, Burn you at the stake. Now that, however. Yeah, it's true. Um, huh. Do you guys have any suggestions here as how, how I proceed? 
I'm feeling Good like luck. this plan is not going to work as intended. I have suggestions yeah. on how to deal with Gurney. Okay. I'm not is sure. It, does it like involve them. just knifing her by, the, by any chance? <laughs> is this part of your I elaborate like, plan? <laughs> First, like... I'm going to stab this person, and then I'm going to stab this person. We're going to do two things at once. I'm going to, to guess what the plan is. And at the same time, I'm going to talk about how our show is sponsored by a fabulous new tabletop RPG called Blades in the Dark. <laughs> <laughs> We're not actually sponsored by that, but John Harper made a really cool RPG. I kickstarted it, and it should be being released sometime in the next few months. So you might see it on the show. And nice. I oh. feel like Baldur's going to probably kill one or more people this episode. It seems if like we're ramping up to it, doesn't plan, it? There's going to be more than one. Yo, so, Un, <clears throat> out of character, have you actually told me of uh, her plans to, to basically kill you? Um, no, I haven't. I've been keeping that close hold. Um, right. I, it's, it's something I kind of... Uh, you got to remember, Un is... Is this, this is this is a card that could be played against her, and she's not just going to to flaunt that. Um, she knows mm. she's in danger, and she's trying to figure out a way to do something about it. Well, then I can only offer you advice out of character. But um, say you've already seen death and doom at the at the feast. Mm -hmm. Love that Arthur has a deck of cards out. Anywho, Your arrow cards actually. Oh, mm -hmm. I I have a, I have a deck of that too. Those, now if I could only get. To <laughs> is that how you're like doing my fortune? By the way. No, I'm not. But look, <laughs> the card that I picked is the survivor. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've already foreseen. Much of. You've already seen death at the feast, and uh, you did comment that uh, the easiest way to get you killed were for you to cast the bones and foretell doom and then have people drop down dead well uh what if instead of uh what if instead of uh telling the fo the fortune you instead demonstrated just how good a teacher you were and have gurney a very interesting do, idea do the oh. fortune telling hmm hmm i like where I this mean, is going okay um so I have a feeling that my entire conversation with Thor at this point is probably a bust. Um, I, I don't have any real be... moves that I can use to uh, to to I've... encourage her to do anything that I want to do, and I don't think I'm going to be able to convince her um, to work with me. It's sounding like I kind of went down the wrong path. Um, so at this point, I will grunt Obviously and say, just "Reload your quick save." <laughs> exactly right. Mm. Yeah. Um, Spend your bonds on something else. Uh, yes. So how late is it? If if I want to do do some talking with some people, and <laughs> some back alleys. So, so Uno Crone is basically going to retire the conversation Excellent. and strongly suggest that she reconsider. She has a path to uh, uh, regain her daughter if she so desires. See her at see her if she changes her mind and then wanders off. Um, goes back to the feast hall and joins everyone else. So that's how that conversation is going to conclude. I'm not going to push the issue anymore, and I'm not going to mention Aitlin. Excellent. Let's talk about Olaf Olafson and his advancement. Yeah. Pick Olaf Olafson. Yeah. Yeah, I figured since I was yapping my mouth at so many people, confidant would make a lot of sense. Oh, and, interesting. And I, I like that confidant. Is, that sounds pretty cool. So, confidant, when you tell someone what you think, whether they ask you or no, <laughs> roll versed. On a 10 plus, they pick two. On a 7 to 9, they pick one. The three options are they erase a bond with you, you gain a bond with them, or they do what you want. Excellent. On a miss... They shut you out. Wow, that could be a very powerful move for you, my friend. Well, I think it's fitting. I was I looked through all of the other ones, and there's a lot of ones that I think are cool, but I feel like that one fits the way I've been playing Olaf it does. like it does. the best. I've been I've been telling a lot of people what I think should be going on. Not in the in the balder sense of machinations for the world, but sort of in Olaf's own perspective. Woman! 
take care of my child, and then you can have your own. Exactly. Just like that. So, yeah, yeah, confidant. That's what I'm going with. All right, and now we cut sideways. Uh, so, we probably see Olaf Olafsson speaking with Heidi Holdbason, and he see you know, like, you're... You're suddenly, like, getting better at talking to him, and you're like, hey, I think I know how to push this guy into doing what I want, or getting closer to him. <laughs> but uh, we cut over to Balder Odinson, who's, who's going who's to... Got plans. Who's got plans to see the bride-to-be before... Oh, fantastic. I think that as you're walking, like, the, the light of the full moon glints off of your axe, as you're just, like, jangling your way towards the bride's tent. Uh, have a little conversation with her. I mean, it's only fitting. She's about to be married, and uh, we've got history, at least in my mind. I'd like Jesus. to. I'd like to get it out of the way. It's so fucking creepy right now, <laughs> it's man. The, it's it's the night before your wedding. You're a blushing bride, and your ex boyfriend shows up with an axe and a dagger. <laughs> And a bow. Yeah. And a spear. It's actually two nights before her wedding, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Two yeah. nights. Yeah, okay. Changes uh, everything, you're right. Okay. So uh, I politely knock on the tent. There, there's a Huskarl and like two guards outside, but they know of you and they like let you in. And inside is Laura Ingolf's daughter. She's like seventeen years old with platinum hair. And she has she's a very shapely young woman. But more importantly, she's very accentuating clothing. Like, she's got the beads, apparently very popular, but she's also got a very revealing dress as well, and like a very tight waistline on on her skirt. And she's just like, Ugh, I see that you have made it here, Balder Odinson. Well, of I course. assume that you need our village's food to feed your people for the next few days. I've heard how poor and peasant-like you have become in your time. They say that your man Olaf Olafsson should have stayed in Ireland when he went raiding. He might have had a better time growing potatoes. <laughs> Yikes. Glad I'm not there to hear this. That's such a terrible thing to say to your, to your dear neighbor. Are you sure we can't all get along? He says, I can get along. <clears throat> we got along quite well with with the old Gothi before you killed him. I hear that while he was pissing in the wind, you were busy declaring your own level of cowardice and your, your devotion to greed. It seems that Loki favors you this season with the piss in the wind returning once again around the world. And gold. Let's not forget that. My, my she rating just, went she quite looks well. so frustrated. She's like, my father would not say it to you, but you have betrayed this land. You have given Come. the King Harold the fair-haired. You have given his Harold a foot in the door. You have paid him the tax money that he does not deserve. And now he seeks money from all the village up and down the coast. It is only a matter of seasons before he begins to travel inland and declare money from us. Well, we'll certainly have to deal with that together, then. Why? why? So there is no together. There is no us. Get out oh. of my tent, or I will call my husband. Your husband-to-be. She rolls her and... eyes and is like, whatever you wish to call him. I know that and... you covet me, old man. You seek our union, but you are not someone worthy of my affections. Nor are you worthy of my family. Well, I'm very saddened that you feel that way. I think we could have uh, established a great union, our two villages. Uh, alas, I suppose it is not to be. I would, however, like to spend one of these fancy bond points I've got here. <laughs> Tell me what you would spend your bond on, Balder Odinson. So, uh, so, what exactly would it take take for her to uh, 
I'll just say it outright. Settle for me. How, so you're saying, how can I get your character to settle on marrying me? Me. Okay. Um. Hmm. Yeah, think about this one. Okay, got it. Um, by the way she tosses her hair, as she, like, turns away from you, you catch something in the corner of her eye, and you know, you know that she wants some of you. At some level, she definitely wants a relationship with you. And you read it to be that if Aitlin, you know, was somehow discredited, if you were somehow to regain your honor and just get your village back on track, you might, might have a chance with her. All right. Oh, and you'd also have to get the Herald out. Yeah, like, that's a serious issue. The Herald? <laughs> Herald, Herald. The guy you guys were paying the gold to. From the king of uh... Norway. I thought we were going to resolve that later. That, that I happened had... during the fall. <clears throat> oh. That was that was where all of the money that you guys made while raiding, that was where yeah. it all went. That was oh. the great misfortune that befell the, the oh. raiding party of uh, right. Olaf Olafsson. Oh, I, I, thought, I thought we were going to resolve that later because I was going to make, an, make him have an accident. Oh, you oh, can well. certainly have that happen, you know, soon. Excellent. That's a thing you could have happen. <laughs> is, is there an advancement you can take for encouraging accidents? <laughs> is it <laughs> called, like, no, because the wobbly stare? All like of your enemies is... accidentally trip and die. You know, at the beginning of the session, I was talking about how this wasn't like Pathfinder, and all of a sudden, it seems like violence is the only answer Baldur will accept. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that he wants to kill someone. It's that he wants to kill a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Balder does not have a, a, a mind for tactics, apparently. <laughs> oh, I he's got a mind.